Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. We're going to look at section 5.5, which is applications with rational expressions. The first thing we're going to talk about is strategies for any sort of application problems. Some students like to call them story problems. The first step that I have of the five steps is to read the problem. Read it and answer this question. Do I know the terms that are used? If uh, a question asks me about an isosceles triangle and I don't know what an isosceles triangle is, I can't go any further. So I read it to make sure, do I understand the terms that are being used? Then I read it a second time. And when I read it the second time, my goal is to answer this question. What is given information? What is it telling me that is concrete and known values and units? Then I read it a third time. And this time, when I read it, I ask myself, what do I need to find? So before I even actually begin any application problem, I've read it three times. Now, the fourth step is probably the most difficult one. This is where we struggle, because this is where we have to use critical thinking and combine what we know about the given information and relate it to what we need to find. And that can sometimes be the biggest hurdle of application problems. But through repetition and keep trying and work through them, you'll build those skills and you'll get more and more proficient at it. So we build an equation and we solve it. That's step four. Now, before we just blindly put in our answer and say, that's what I found, we need to, again, read the problem. And we ask ourselves this question. Did I answer the question? Did I find exactly what it was looking for? And does my answer make sense? Is it a reasonable solution to what the given information was? So when we do application problems, the key is we're going to read it four times before we're all done at minimum. If we need to, sometimes we'll go back and read it more times until we understand what's happening. So let's look at an application. It says, to make a salad dressing, we use three parts of oil to one part vinegar. If you have 12 ounces of vinegar, how many ounces of oil do you need? Well, I've read it the first time, and I feel comfortable with the terminology. There's nothing out of the ordinary here that I have to look up to understand. Now I'm going to read it a second time and say, what is the given information? To make a salad dressing, use three parts of oil. So I know the given information is there are three parts of oil to one part of vinegar. So that's a ratio, if I think about it, three parts of oil to one part of vinegar. I can say three oil for every one vinegar. Given information. Then it asks how many, or if you have 12 ounces, so I know I have 12 ounces of vinegar, how many ounces of oil do I need? Well, other information is I'm given 12 ounces of vinegar. So I assign the unit of ounces of vinegar to the number 12. That was given information. Now, what I, if I read it a third time, to make a salad dressing, use three parts of oil to one part vinegar. If you have 12 ounces of vinegar, how many ounces of oil do I need? Well, I don't know the amount of oil or the amount of ounces to oil. But what I was given was this ratio. So now I have to associate what was the given information with what I need to find. Well, I know this was a ratio because of the way it was worded, three parts of oil to one part of vinegar. And that's how we explain a ratio. Well, I also know something about vinegar. What I don't know is oil. So I'm going to write a proportion. Three oil to one vinegar equals so many oil to 12 vinegar. I have built my equation by making that relation between this ratio and some of the given information and the unknown information. So now I can go ahead and solve this. I would cross multiply, because it is a proportion. 12 times 3 is 36. 1 times x is x. So now I have to determine, well, what does this represent? I found x equals 36. Well, 36 ounces of oil. So because it's an application problem, I'm going to apply my units, 36 ounces of oil. This would be required if I'm making a salad dressing using 12 ounces of vinegar. Is the ratio of 36 to 12 3 to 1? Yes, it is. So I'm going to reread the problem one more time. To make a salad dressing, use three parts of oil to one part vinegar. If you have 12 ounces of vinegar, 
how many ounces of oil do you need? Well, I found ounces of oil. So I have the right units. And does it make sense? 36 to 12 is 3 to 1 if I were to reduce that. So it makes sense. So I can pretty much rest assured that I have the correct answer. And I answered the question. Let's look at another example here. This is what's called a related rate uh, problem. We have an experienced mason can build a block wall in three hours. His apprentice can build the same wall in six hours. How long would it take them if they work together? So I read it the first time. I'm assessing, do I understand what's happening here? So a mason's building a concrete block wall or whatever it is, uh, what material he's using. He can build that wall in three hours. His apprentice can build the same wall in six hours. These are related rates. One wall can be built in three hours. This is what the experienced mason can do. He has a rate, one wall per three hours. That's given information. The apprentice can build the same wall, just one of them, in six hours. How long would it take them if they work together? So this is where, when I read it the third time, I'm saying, OK, one wall per three hours, one wall per six hours. How long would it take them if they worked together? I pick up on that keyword. Together means I'm going to add their time. So if he works with him, we're going to add their work together. And the question states, how long would it take? Well, how long would it take to do what? How long would it take to build that same wall? Right? So one wall in x amount of hours. I don't know what that value is. So now if we think about it, after reading it the third time and making that association between what was given and what was being asked for, I was able to put it together and actually build an equal equation. We have one wall per three hours, one for every three, one for every six, one for how many? We don't know. That's our variable. So now we have this rational expression, or rational ex equation, rather. And now I can do, use the methods to solve this. I'm going to multiply through by the LCD. The LCD of 3 and 6 is 6, but we also have that factor of x. So the LCD is 6x. What I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. When I multiply this, 1 third of 6x is 2x. 6x times 1 sixth is just x. And 6x times 1 over x is just 6. Now we can simplify. 2x and x is 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 2. To what? Well, this is where we go back to the problem and say, OK, x was units of hours. And now we're going to think, when we read this again, does this answer make sense? An experienced mason can build a wall in three hours. His apprentice can do the same wall in six hours. How long if they work together? Well, if they work together, the smallest time is three hours. If he's getting some help, it should be less than three hours. Two hours is less than three, so that answer makes sense to me. It should take less time if they worked together. So two hours seems like a reasonable answer. I've answered the question, and I'm going to rest assured that it is correct. All right, one more example. And here we have um, distance, rate, and time. And this is an equation you should be familiar with. Distance equals rate times time. And we can rearrange this equation in any manner. Maybe I want to solve it for time. Time equals distance over rate. Maybe I want to solve this for r. Rate equals distance over time. Any combination of this equation we might need. If we read this, it says a semi-truck travels 300 miles a distance through the flatlands in the same amount of time as it takes to travel 180 miles, another distance, through the mountains. The rate of the truck, so we're told something about a rate, a speed, is 20 miles per hour, slower in the mountains than in the flatlands. Find both rates. So I kind of combined reading it twice uh, in one step. I'm identifying that I'm comfortable with the terms and the given information. So maybe we want to draw an illustration uh, as a tool to help us understand what's happening. So for 300 miles, 
This semi-truck drives through his flatlands. And then for 180 miles, he's driving up the mountain. So we know that this distance is 300 miles. And we know that this distance is 180 miles. So this is given information. We're also told uh, the same amount of time. And I'm going to underline that because I'm going to come back to that. And we're told something about the rates. The rate here, we don't know what his rate here is when he's in the flatlands. But we are told that the rate in the mountains is 20 miles per hour slower in the mountains. So whatever this rate is, we're going 20 miles an hour slower, or the rate minus 20. So with this given information, we're ready to build an equation. And what I understand here is because of this statement here, same amount of time, I can set this up as a proportion. Time is distance over rate. And if we have the distance over rate of 1 equal to the distance over rate of the other, because the same amount of time, they're equal, I can set it up as a proportion. So distance, 300 over its rate, which we don't know. We don't know how fast he's going in the flatlands, is the same amount of time, distance over rate, as 180 miles in the mountain over its rate of the flatland less 20 miles an hour. So this is a proportion. I'm going to leave it right here for you to solve. And I'll give you the answer right now so you could check your work. But I want to make sure you work through it. The rate in the flatlands is 50, and in the mountains is 30. So make sure that you work through this and find that solution. So this has been Section 5.5, Applications. Thank you for watching.